QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Example 2 Record Customer Payment, Cost of Goods Sold, and Revenue for Month Number 5 Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023 here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Remembering we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put our reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the second tab to duplicate it back to the middle tab down to the reports on the left hand side and we want to be opening the balance sheet as that's thinking tab and to the right reports on the left this time the profit and loss the major two the big two closing up the hand boogie changing the range 010125 to 06325 and run it and then i'm going to be well, actually, I want to see this on a month by month breakout. So let's hit the drop down here before I move forward and go to the months and then run it. Boom, shakalaka, tab to the middle. Close. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Close up the hand boogie, run the range 010125 to 06325. Let's see this one as a classy report, breaking it out by classes, class tracking, run it. And then we're going to tab to the left. All right, we're in the projects down below and we're in project number two. That's where our focus is. Let's close the hand boogie and let's recap what we have done thus far. Uh, so we have created an estimate and then once we made the estimate we made a billing structure that we're going to charge the customer for starting with that customer deposit that we recorded with an invoice but we didn't want to record it as revenue because instead we want to be recognizing the revenue in like a completed a uh, percentage of, of, of completion type of way so we've been recording the actual expenses that have happened as we've gone through this process here and recorded our expenses to cost of goods sold for this project and then we've calculated what our revenue would be a proportion of the revenue based on the completion process and recorded our revenue that way and that's the general process and we've been going through that process until month number five here so now we're on month number five now last time we left off we had uh invoiced the client for uh, and, and we're going to be receiving the payment now. So we invoiced them with an invoice, but the invoice increased accounts receivable like we want, but the other side didn't go to revenue, but rather to billings. And now they're going to pay us on it. We're going to imagine because we gave them that nice, easy invoice, making it easy for them to pay us. That's going to happen on 515. We're going to get money. Checking accounts going to go up. Check out the checking. It's going up, man, because we're doing business. The other side's going to go to the uh, accounts receivable it goes down because we got paid and then we're going to say that amount that's going to be our transaction let's record it in excel straightforward transaction nothing unusual here checking account i'm in v3 f2 plus f2 scrolling down picking up that thirty-five thousand, and other side's going to decrease this accounts receivable account f2 plus f2 and 35,000 and so it goes back down to zero boom let's do that on our our quickbooks which again nothing kind of unusual happening uh in order to do that because we we're just going to receive the payment for the invoice that we sent out last time by the way if we if we look at this information in our customer field this way 
and I go to my customers over here, customer number two, we can see the detail by form of all the kind of transactions that happened. And we can see that we've been using these invoices for external and internal invoices, but it's it's working out quite nicely that that the ones that we're billing on are still showing up as a payment that we need to receive, right? And so this at this point in time, I'm just gonna say, okay, we're gonna receive payment. They paid us on the invoice. So we're gonna pull that up and this will be as of, when did they pay us? 515, let's say, that's been our process. Okay. And this is just gonna increase the checking account. The other side, decrease in accounts receivable, just like we saw in the Excel worksheet and save it and close it. And so there it is there, payment's been received, invoice have showing as paid, MUI B to the end, going to the tab to the right, running it, checking account goes up, 50, 53, 254, that ties out to our worksheet, don't it? Don't it? I think it do, 53, 254, yes it do. Okay, and then, well, ta then the other side's going to the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable goes back down to zero. All right, great. And then we're gonna just wrap this thing up for the last month, recording our expenses for the cost of goods sold for the last month. And we're gonna break that out, materials, labor, and overhead like we did before. I'm just gonna put on in our numbers, let's say this time it was 15,000 uh, materials. And then I'm going to say uh, 15, let's say, 14,000 here and 1178 here. And if I sum that up, that comes out to 30,178, 30,178. All right, so we'll record that and then we'll figure out our, our revenue based on that. Now, notice that if I total this up now, by the way, total, if I sum it up, sum it up and little darling okay i'm gonna copy this across <laughs> this total here ties out to our total exactly now that's not likely to, i mean obviously you might have to adju basically adjust the estimates based on uh the actual what actually happens right but we're ju just for the practice because we're kind of focused on the progress invoicing we'll keep it there it worked out perfect great okay so then that means that I'm going to record that over here. Let's do that over here. So we're going to have this last for the last month. I'm going to say 515. Uh, Is that what we've been cost of goods sold? Cost of the goods. And the other side's going to be going to the cash. We're going to be paying for the stuff, the materials, the labor, the overhead for the amount of that 30,178. There's our debit, there's our credit. Let's record it journal entry style. And then we'll go to QuickBooks. So it's gonna be cost of goods sold right here in V9, V9, F2 plus F2. Scrolling down, cost of goods sold. Then on up to the checking. Checking account right there, F2 plus F2. Scrolling down, there's the checking. Okay, so there we have it. That looks good. And now, of course, we have a loss here because because we haven't recorded the revenue for that final bit, which we're gonna do next. Okay, so let's. I gotta do that over here, but I'm gonna do it with the expense form. So let's go back to our project, which is probably the screen it would be sensible to do that with. Project number two, it's a project we've been working on. We're gonna say it's an expense type of form and we're gonna say it's just vent the generic vendor one and i'm not gonna do it by category the the date we'll keep the date there that's okay i'm not gonna do it by category but by item let's just delete the items and re-input that in one more time one last time one more round because there i didn't hear a bell and i don't stop i didn't hear no bell until a bell rings i don't stop so 35,000, there it is. We're gonna make it billable. So it pulls over to, uh, to the invoice that will make for internal purposes, revenue recognition purposes. This is gonna be class number two. And then we're gonna say this is liability or labor, labor. And that 
actually hold on a second wait a second wait a second let me look at my breakout over here that's not exactly correct because I got to break it out 15 14 15 thousand okay that makes more sense 14,000 where are you getting those numbers from what are you thinking I don't know I don't know overhead overhead is going to be then the uh, th uh, 1178 okay 1178 and then we're going to mark it up by that 30 percent this is going to be going to class number two let's pull out the trusty calculator to double check the revenue that's going to pull into the invoice for our revenue recognition which is calculated over here that's what's going to pull into the invoice so it's going to be 19.5 plus 18.2 plus 1531.4 and if i check that on this side then i'm going to do the same calculation over here to figure my revenue now so the percent completion is going to be equal to that 30,178 divided by the total cost. And then I'm going to format paint brush it from here, home tab, format paint brusher, and bring that on down. So there it is. And then I'm going to say this, then the revenue of 100,000 times that amount is going to be that 39,231. Boom. And if I sum this up on this side, we get to what? 100%, 100% if I percentify it. And then over here, the total revenue recognized is gonna be about the, the 100. There's some rounding, there's some rounding issues going on, but that's okay, that's pretty, it's pretty dang close. So we'll deal with those rounding issues in a following presentation. So let's just record this for now. And so that looks good. This is going to decrease the checking account. The other side go into the cost of goods sold. Let's save it and close it. Tab into the right and run in. Tab into the right and run. And then we're going to say just like Gen A, just like Gen A told me to run. Okay. So we're going to say that comes out to what did I do? The checking accounts going down. Focus. Focus. There it is, checking accounts going down. The other side is in the accounts receivable. And uh, uh, hold on, checking it. The other side's going to cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. And so there it is. So there's the cost of goods sold in the last month. So now we need to pull in the revenue that's going to tie out using our percentage of completion conceptual framework. So we did that. Did I do that over here? I don't think we did it yet. Let's do it journal entry format, which is a little bit easier. So we'll just say journal journal format way of doing it. 531 revenue. I'm going to put on top, even though it's a credit, because that's the first thing I think of. And that's going to be equal or negative number of the revenue recognition for our table that we came out to. That's what we need to recognize. You better recognize and then we're going to say that this is going to be work in process and negative of that number so there it is revenue and work in process let's bring it on up and we're going to record the revenue in v8 f2 plus f2 bring it on down and boom revenue has been recognized and then work in process work in process let's do that and put in the work put in the work in the process there we have it now these two you note are matching out against each other so we'll when we close the when we close the project we can kind of net those two out and then we've got our revenue minus our cost of goods sold broken out here all in one column when we see it in quickbooks we can see the cutoffs then that are hopefully nicely matched by month right that's the idea so then I'm going to go back on over and how can we do that in QuickBooks? I'd like, I'm using revenue. So I'd like to do it with like an invoice form because that's the thing that we do 
to record revenue. That's the form we use to record revenue most of the time. So I'm going to hit the drop down and record an invoice, not so I can send it to the client because we've already totally billed them already. The estimate is gone. We've already billed them. We're just pulling over the, the billable items for internal revenue recognition purposes. And this is going to be on uh, 531. 531. And so then these items are going to be going to revenue. So what would this do if I just record it? Invoice increases accounts receivable by the total 39,231,40. And then the other sides would be going to revenue. I want these going to revenue, but I don't want that going to the invoice. I need to make that zero and put it to where I want it to go, which is work in process. So I'll just make a little thing down here that I already made and just say uh, it's that's gonna make it go to the work in process account. Negative total amount 39,231.4, class number two. And that should do what we want it to do. No accounts receivable, instead work in process, other side revenue, let's save it, let's close it. This isn't going to the client. This invoice isn't going to the client. It's an internal invoice. We can see that by the way, if I go over here, to my to my sales information customer number two you can see that that it already shows as like paid because it was had a zero balance to it right so it's zeroed out it's paid so that works quite nice and then we can go to the tab to the right and we can see now that the work in process is at that the 100,000 the billings at 100,000 so those two ma match out except for the rounding difference and we could basically close that out uh next time and then and then if i go over here and run this one i've got that nice match out for my last month in may so that works really really good really really good let's go to the first tab and just double check our numbers double check take a double check 23 23076 and then uh, 1001, 1000, okay, looks good. And then if I go to the income statement over here, then I've got one, I've got 100, cause that's the revenue for the job now, minus the 76, uh, 924. And so there's that, there's a 76, 924, 23077, 23077 and excellent. So let's right click here and duplicate this just so we can see this report on a, a, a full year, 123125, if I was to break it out by class, because I used the class tracking. So notice the class tracking and the projects, as well as the tags, normally focus mainly on these income statement uh, accounts. So you can kind of break out by column by column. But the class tracking gives you this nice total at the end, which is doesn't happen as easily with the tags. And again, with the project reports, if I open up and duplicate the projects for all of the projects, then you get a, a much more you know summarized report project, project summary report from 010125, 123125, boom. And you get that. You also have, of course, the project reports here that are broken out by projects within this class. I can go to my I can go to my project reports and see the projects, which are different than the classes, but we're using classes to assign to the projects to kind of give that double redundancy for it. But I don't see I can't I don't have the report that's side by side, project by project, but I get this nice report for a single you know, project within that, that project area over here. So we can also see on the balance sheet, if I run this for the full year, 123125. So now it's got my two projects for the full year. One was at the end, one at the beginning. If I had amounts in the work in progress accounts, this is what the class tracking adds to the, to the, to the picture here, because that's kind of nice because then I can, I can, easily see the balance sheet account uh, for those two accounts so that I can kind of match them out and close this job out uh, with regards to them quite easily. If I didn't have classes, I could go into this account 
and again sort it by sort it by customer like that but remember if you sort by customer you got to make sure you have the name field which is why another reason why we used the invoices so i can sort by you know the project and the customer over here there's only one in it right now so just note that if there are multiple customers i could sort it you know by customer which is nice so that's another way that we can get kind of that redundancy in there so now where we stand of course is that the the job is basically completed and we've we've now got these accounts in work and process and the billing and the ending closing journal entry for us would basically be to close net these two out so i'm going to net these two out and then that rounding difference we can just close that out to like cost of goods sold uh usually if it's a if it's a minor difference so we'll do that next time